her. Det er meget dejligt. The plan is to try, um, I said Pat and Keefe to go up on the ledge, but I will try it without their pass, just so I'll see people from going up this. Yeah, so just to confirm now, so I will try to pull it all the way up through, and then when it starts to go down the hill, I will rush around. Mm -hmm. um, so you're not planning on pulling it out up on top of the hill, mm -hmm. just want to pull it right through. Right right through. Yeah. Hopefully the, the trailer down here, if they did move the crane, I will try just maneuver a little bit to give us a bit more space down here. So, just bear with us for a little bit. Thank you guys for coming out early. Um, let you get the health and safety. No unnecessary risks. But have fun, like we always do. So today we're actually installing a fiber optic cable uh, from uh, Rupert's into Jamestown, traversing Mundant Hill. And the idea, or the driver behind this is to a self-healing uh, fiber optic ring around the island which will give us uh, resilience in terms of any breakages along our fiber optic cable route as this is our what we call CNI or our critical network infrastructure. Route. In terms of health and safety, we're working on uh, uh, very steep hillsides or some some cases cliffs. So the key thing here is making sure that you know no unnecessary risks are taken in terms of overreaching. Making sure that when they're climbing poles, safety harnesses are used at all times. PPE is also used, and, and that's that's key. Um, also, they're working on uh, some of the poles are high voltage. So in case again of not being too close to those poles. If it had been wet today, we would have had to abort mission because it would not be safe to be climbing the high voltage poles while it's actually wet.
sort of the, the idea is to um, have a fibre ring um, so that if there's any issues with our fibre that are going up from rivets to the briars directly then we can always bypass, uh, we can always use this fibre to keep business continuity um, and just mitigate any loan downtime and um, any uh, any service out of just for, for a long period of time. Um, yes, that's the gist of it, just uh, business continuity. Okay, how are we going today? All right, going right. Um, I think uh, we have a good start and um, a little things that uh, would, would pop up on the way, but uh, we bring everything to 4C to try to foresee everything, so we bring everything to counteract there. Um, yeah, I think they're only going right at the moment. Eh? <laughs> uh, today, just helping out the technical guys and the maintenance guys on a bit of a cable run this morning. Um, yeah, quite a busy job. Yeah, so it started early and quite a walk to get here. It so was, it was yeah. quite a bit of a walk. We had some gear to carry up as well. Uh -huh. um, it's quite interesting, it was a bit breezy this morning as well, starting off. Um, had some um, binders to carry on and some equipment for climbing to carry on. But we got here in the end and, and the project's going alright so far. Okay, so what are you doing now? So now we're just busy pulling the fibre cable uh, to this point over here. From here it's going to go down to Anne's place down in the gardens. Uh, so now we don't create our figure 8. Um, we do it this way because of the minimum bend radius of the fibre. Uh, we can't actually see the minimum bend radius. Uh, radius. Um, so what we do, we'll flip it over and we're waiting on the other, two, other team to go down to the bottom of uh, Sisters Walk, um, the, the walkway going up to Mundans. Um, we, we will feed it through, um, tie into the rope and they will pull it down. Um, uh, while some, another gang, another team go down to um, put it up in the, the true union. If you look here, 469, so that's actually how much cable we then pull. The actual physical cable, length of the physical cable is different to the actual cable inside. The cable inside is actually longer. So you can make a mistake if you test it by a machine that it will give you the length of the cable inside, but the actual physical length of the cable would be shorter. The reason for that, the inner cable or the tubes inside is the cable it twists. So it rotates around each other inside, that actually give you more. Uh, 
in 2011 when we first embarked on uh, fiber optics, um, we decided that you know rather than sending one person away to get trained on, on fiber optics, we we decided to get out a professional trainer. In fact, it was an ex Cape and Waters um, uh, college tutor from the Caribbean, uh, from the communications college, and he came out and he trained the entire team in the use of handling fiber optic cable. Um, but also the splicing and testing of the cable. And while some of those team members have left, we still have a significant number who were part of that original training. Um, and they, they share that knowledge with the new recruits. And this is what this process is also a part of today. We are there, you know, getting the hands-on experience. So this is the easy part in the sense or the most labor-intensive part of actually installing uh, the cable. The, the more skilled and tedious part is going to be coming down to when you actually splice and terminate the fiber optic cable. Because you're dealing with, once you strip back the, the, the cable itself, you know, you're looking at cable that is almost the, the sort of diameter of a grain of here. So that's how, how small it is you actually work. But the guys have mastered the skills and um, I'm proud to say that, yeah, we have the necessary skills um, and capabilities within the team to to handle any fiber optic connections. The common lines are uh, mainly we use like the latest, but common lines is for like difficult places. We um, it's difficult to carry the latest and too far, so we uh, use the common lines. Mm -hmm. um, they're not difficult to use once you get um, used to it. It just comes natural. It's just like walking up the ladder. After uh, some poles can be hard. Um, as you climbing, you need to uh, stuck your heels in because if it do slide, then you got a rough road coming down. There's a wind dampers for the wind blowing through. Yeah, we call them anti gallop. What we call the cable chop them yeah. You can see the cables like flap them up and down. That's what it stops there. And how many have you put along this? Um, you don't have to put in every bay, but normally we put them in where it's windy, the windy parts. There's, there's been a number of weeks of planning uh, in terms of this cable, uh, this project. What we did, uh, the guys, um, in the weeks leading up to the actual work today, had been prepping the cable, so they've been installing the, the connectors on all of the cables. And so today, it was a case of now taking the cable and feeding it through those connectors, dragging it up the hill, down the next side, and in the process, um, securing the cable. So, um, And then as the guys work their way backward, they will then be tensioning up the cable so that there's a certain span of drop uh, between the poles and that is to uh, ensure um, the cable is secure on the, on, on the cable at the right heights in terms of making sure it's not a health and safety risk for any um, pedestrians that may traverse the route there as well. I'm, I'm very pleased, very happy. Um, as always, the, the guys, you know, very efficient. Um, there's no moans, there's no groans. And what I like about the team is, you know, it's hard work, but you don't realize it's hard work because they always make a joke out of things. <laughs> but while they're joking, the work never stops. You know, the work goes on. They may have a little banter at each other. Um, and that's a part of the, 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 the day, making the day go by and you know, the way we deal with the pressures of, of the job. But I'm very pleased and very grateful for the guys for making the sacrifice to get out of their beds early in the morning, knowing that some of them uh, had a late night last night as well. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm very pleased.